What's up guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. So given the circumstances, um, we're on lockdown. I figured I would just show you what I'm doing around the house to stay centered, stay happy and positive. I hope everyone's taking the time to still do the things that keep you happy, keep you positive um, at a time like this. I know it's a really tough time for everybody, but I am noticing that everyone's taking the time to really connect digitally and um, encourage each other so that's good keep that up but I hope you enjoy this video and take care of yourselves so one self-care treat that I like to indulge in every now and then is a bath I don't do this one too often because I don't want to waste water like that but when I do it it's like the most recharging relaxing activity so I just remove the caddy and um, I line up some candles right here just you know for vibe purposes <laughs> And I put on, I'm going to show you guys what it is, but I'm gonna, I put on a YouTube channel called HD Colors. I'll show you what that is. These are my favorite bath bombs. It's by the way, and the scent is Jasmine Rose. I'm running out. There's only one left. I'm going to savor that tonight, but it smells so, so good. And my skin really feels nice and soft after I don't put anything else, no bubbles, just this bath bomb because the scent is like I said, so relaxing and so good. This is like a little salt rock thing. Um, you can use this to relieve tension in your neck, just kind of give yourself like a little neck massage under your feet. It's good for stress relief. I put on makeup today because I didn't want to look dead the entire video. So I think one of the best things you could do right now, especially to pass the time, is to read a book. Reading has always been, for, at least for me, a really relaxing kind of stress relief type activity. There's so many pros to reading, why wouldn't you do that, especially now when a lot of us have a lot more time. When it comes to reading, a um, couple of important things for me. One is to be in a relaxing part of your home, wherever that is, just somewhere you feel really comfortable and just zen. Even if that means you need to go outside on your balcony or your backyard, if you need to hear the birds while you're reading. I personally can't read in bed because I end up falling asleep, but my favorite place is just curled up on the sofa with like a blanket over my legs, which is really comfortable. So I shared some of my favorite books on Instagram. I'm gonna show them to you here too. So on my nightstand, I have um, maybe like five or six books, mostly about mindfulness and that like this one's called Live With, How to Live With Intention. Just little things I can read first thing in the morning when I wake up just to get my day going and to think positively. Um, it talks about like goal setting, some um, immune boosting um, at home remedies you can make, uh, meditation, a lot of self love in this book as well. So um, just if you need something for like a quick boost, a quick pick me up, I really like this one. If you're into aliens, I highly recommend this book. It is so good. I, I, I don't even know how to explain this book. You just need to read it. Anyway, <laughs> um, another book that I highly, highly recommend is called Manifest Now. Um, my friend Susie recommended this book a while back and I got it immediately and I'm so happy I did. I can't say enough about this book. It's it's for anybody. I mean, it's a very simple read. It's nothing, you know, out of this world. It's very straightforward, um, real things that you can put into practice. It's just really practical stuff. You know, our thoughts have a big part in steering our lives. So um, this really just puts that all out there. and. and helps you to start to develop different habits that are just more more conducive to a you know like a more a more fulfilled life like i said really straightforward read um it has some activities in there too that you can do i really love this book also this one right here um i'm almost done with this a lot of this actually is appendices so really it's maybe this much of the book it's called um behold a pale horse if you are into I don't want to call it conspiracy because it's not, but if you're into that type of thing, this is a good book for you. 
not gonna say too much about it, but it is excellent. Anyway, those are the books that I personally recommend. I really like them, but um, I just have like a lot of, you should just have books. I mean, books are great. <laughs> have them lying around if you're ever just wanting to, I mean, you could never, you can never do harm by reading. It's just good for you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. I'm trying to see what else is interesting here that I could recommend as far as books. Pretty much anything up here. Oh, I have another copy of the Screw Tape Letters. Loved both of these books. Anything by Malcolm Gladwell, I can recommend. What else? Oh, this was a cat that I saw in my dream. So I just drew it. Isn't that weird? Who dreams that? So while I'm in here in my study, I also want to share another um, self-care activity I've been doing. Some people may not consider this self-care, but I personally think goal setting is the best thing you could be doing for yourself right now. Since we're all on lockdown right now, one of the only things we actually can do that's productive work-wise, or even just to whole life-wise, is planning. And to be honest, right now, morale in general is kind of down. People aren't feeling great. So one of the best ways to keep your spirits up and keep you optimistic for the future is to plan. So I shared this on Instagram early on in like January when 2020 had just begun when we all thought we were gonna have a great year. So this is one of the Erin Condren planners. I got this at the very end of 2019 because I really wanted to kickstart the year feeling motivated and um, just different than I had the last year and a half, two years. And really this helped me so much already just in that one and a half, two months that things were okay. Um, this was keeping me really motivated. So so you can customize the, um, the uh, covers. I chose this one because 2020. It starts, the month starts off with like a, a saying, something to just brighten up your day and make you feel good. So at the beginning of every month, you have this page here where you can write down just important birthdays in this section. This is my favorite section here, the monthly goals. I think four bullets is perfect. I think anything more than like four goals a month is might get overwhelming, so this is perfect. I love this. Here, I typically end up writing some kind of quote that motivates me, and then this section is, I don't know, I personally, I doodle in it. I use it for like manifesting. So I chose this um, layout. You can, there's like two different layouts. One is more like boxes. I like the horizontal layout much better. Um, and what I like the most about this is you have your days and there's plenty of room to write, but also at the end of each day is like a box where, I don't know, you could do some additional notes, some more goal setting, important things you don't wanna forget, things like that. And then at the very end of each month, you also get a note page. You also have a whole section of notes at the end. Probably the best thing about this planner is the stickers. <laughs> I don't know why, I love these stickers. And they're not just like decorative stickers. A lot of these are like, um, you can write reminders, anything important you can put these gold ones next to these guys actually say reminder to do this week, today, important, all this stuff. These guys are a little more decorative, but very cute. And then you have another whole page of like, um, I don't know, maybe like bookmarker kind of stickers or labels. I'm someone who tends to get easily pulled into just like a dark space where I, you know, don't want to move, I don't want to do anything. So having a planner like this that's so engaging, that kind of really pulls you in and makes you do things has been really, really helpful for me. You may not have the time to wait for this if you order it. I think it takes up to like two weeks to get it because most of them are custom items. Um, so if you have your own planner, do this. Write your goals down. Writing your goals down or even just using the planner to Make a list every day of you know what you wanna accomplish in those days. Don't overwhelm yourself. Maybe do like three things. And as you check off each item at the end of the day, you look back, I know this from experience, you look back on that list. Sometimes I'll have a list of like eight things to do that day and if I check off like five or six of them, I'm so happy because that's progress. I made progress, I was active, I did things. Sometimes it's really hard. I mean, some of you may not understand and some of you probably definitely understand that sometimes it's really hard to just even get out of bed. We'll talk about depression another day, it's a whole other video, but um, I'm I'm functioning, but, but certain days are exceptionally difficult. So having uh, a planner as, you know, multifaceted as this, I think, you know, Erin Condren really knew what she was doing with these planners. They're like, 
I, like I said, they sort of changed how I started doing things. So all of this to say, don't underestimate the power of planning, writing things down, you know, sometimes we are our own worst enemy so try to combat that by tricking your brain into thinking we're friends because <laughs> really sometimes our minds really work against us so it sometimes it takes like a strategic move like this to you know redirect your thoughts and get you get you moving getting you more positive Also, I'm doing a major cleanup organizing project around the house starting with this. This is too much to include in one video. So if you wanna see a video just about how I organize this space, let me know. So everyone knows right now is kind of a tense time with grocery shopping. It seems for some reason bread is one of the things that is going really fast, which is kind of confusing because bread is perishable. So I don't know why people are stockpiling bread, but it has been out of stock at Whole Foods every single time I've been there. Luckily, I know how to make bread at home. So I'm gonna show you the easiest recipe for like a French loaf that I make. It's not quite baguette. It's, it's like a French bread, it's softer. So first things first, the yeast. So you wanna proof your yeast for a few minutes before you add it to the mixture. I'm using this active dry yeast and I'm gonna take one tablespoon and I'm gonna put it into a quarter cup of water and mix that and just let it sit. So once that's mixed up, you can set that aside and then I'm gonna take one cup of hot water, not boiling, just hot. And that's going to go in the bowl. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar. About one teaspoon of salt, which I'm almost out of. Great. And just about a quarter cup of oil. And then the flour. So I'm using bread flour, but I've done this recipe with all-purpose flour before. It works just fine. So I'm gonna take about a cup and a half of the flour. You are gonna need a little more flour for the rest of the recipe. But for now we're doing about a cup and a half. It's one. And I'm just eyeballing another half here. And then we're just gonna combine these ingredients, get them mixed up. So I just mix that up. So we're not gonna have a dough consistency just yet. It's still gonna be a little bit slimy. Just make sure it's all combined and mixed up. And then we're gonna take our yeast and add that to the mixture. So you definitely wanna add the yeast while the mixture is still in its kind of uh, liquidy phase. Just make sure it's all mixed up because next we're gonna add the remaining flour and then it's gonna turn into a, a legit dough. Bread is just one of those things that, you know, it's kind of hard to mess up. The only thing that's really important with bread is that you get the yeast right the rest of it is pretty simple. All right, it's time to add the remaining uh, flour. The only thing you're gonna watch for while you're mixing in this last batch of flour is that the dough starts pulling away from the, basically the walls of the, um, the bowl. So you, you're gonna add probably up to a cup and a half of flour, maybe less, maybe even more, just enough to you see it's kind of like pulling away from the um, the walls of the bowl here and it's starting to turn into a dough. Also all of these measuring cups are from Anthropology. So are my little guys here. <laughs> Pretty much everything for home I get from Anthropology. And I like the wooden spoon because it's easy to mix. 
I have that fancy KitchenAid mixer with the dough attachment, but it's just not worth it for all that mess. It's way easier to just do it manually. So if you remember my homemade pizza recipe, I'm gonna do the same thing with this dough. Uh, I'm gonna roll it out, actually reverse. I'm gonna, instead of letting it rise first and then rolling it out, I'm gonna roll it out, shape it into the bread loaf, and then let it rise for about 30 to 40 minutes. gonna rise for about a half hour you're always supposed to put rising dough in a warm place what I personally do is I turn on my smaller oven to about 150 degrees and turn it off once it's kind of warm in there and then just put it so you're not actually baking it yet I just want it in a warm environment where it can rise you can see it's rising already it's probably gonna get a little bit bigger than that <music> Another way I'm sort of staying sane through all this is just coming outside for a little bit of fresh air. Um, just definitely make sure you're stepping out for a little bit, whether it's your yard, your balcony, just stepping outside the door uh, for a few minutes just to get some fresh air. I think that's really important right now. Besides just kind of taking a walk around the yard, I am doing gardening as well. Gardening has always been a super self-care activity for me. It's kind of a spiritual experience, actually. It's always just been a very calming, therapeutic experience. I have a rose garden and I have a vegetable garden on the other side. I'm on a corner lot, so even though it's a pretty big lot, I have limited space to actually plant vegetables. So this used to be nothing. It was just dirt. And I planted these roses and now they're almost as tall as me. I've got all these little buds coming in, so now is the time to really tend to them and take care of them. A couple of them have bloomed here. Look at how pretty. These guys over here are white and there's so many of them. So I come out here and just take a look and see what needs to be pruned, um, what leaves need to be pulled off. It's actually good for roses to like pull the leaves off. Look at which leaves are looking kind of unhealthy like these guys and pull those guys off. Look for dead flowers, also for pests like aphids and other little pests that I need to get rid of. But yeah, it's very therapeutic for me to be out here working on these flowers. Alexa, play Spanish guitar instrumentals on Spotify. Playing Spanish guitar by various artists. 